So there's this persistent myth that has been perpetuated by conservatives that they are being disproportionately targeted by social media giants because of their political orientation. So if you're a conservative, you are more likely to see censorship by Facebook or YouTube than, you know, if you were a leftist. Now, as a leftist, as someone who knows pretty much everyone in indie media on the left, this is something that affects everyone, right? And of course, we have to do something about the power that these tech giants have. But the reason why there's this myth that this only affects conservatives is because conservative lawmakers like Ted Cruz, for example, draw attention you know, to the issue whenever Steven Crowder is demonetized, for example, or, you know, whenever Diamond and Silk are victims of perceived censorship, Republicans will speak out about this. So they're kind of perpetuating this myth, and even Donald Trump is now falling for it, and he's spoken out about this before, too, that he thinks there is a conservative bias, or a bias against conservatives, to be specific. So now he's planning to take action. He wants to do something about it. And what he's choosing to do is absolutely, unquestionably the wrong thing. It's the opposite of what he should be doing. Because according to a uh, leaked draft of an executive order, he's planning to address this by giving government the power to censor the internet. And who he wants to empower to do this is probably the worst part of the story because he wants to empower the FTC and the FCC. Now, for those of you who don't remember, the chair of the FCC currently is Ajit Pai, who is no friend to the internet, who led the charge to repeal net neutrality, which makes the internet less open. Now, that case is currently pending litigation. But now, Donald Trump, may very well sign an executive order that allows Ajit Pai to do something about perceived bias against conservatives and fight for the future, which is basically the leading organization who is fighting to keep the internet free and open, sounded the alarm about this, saying the White House just leaked a draft executive order that would give the government the power to censor the internet. We have to stop it before it's too late. And they then linked to an article, which I will share in the description box, which basically summarizes the situation and, you know, explains what I just told you about how Trump wants to put the FTC and FCC in charge of monitoring and policing online speech on social media platforms. Now, this obviously violates the First Amendment because the government cannot control or dictate the speech of private companies. And furthermore, I don't want anyone to be able to censor or monitor the internet, not leftists, not right-wingers, Nobody. But if there was anyone I trust the least with this job, it's Ajit Pai. So this could be absolutely devastating. It could set a really bad precedent. And I don't want to see future administrations, Republican or Democratic, censor the internet and have the power to shut down speech online that they don't like. Now, for more details on this, we go to John Keeley of Common Dreams, who reports civil liberties groups are warning of a major threat to online freedom and First Amendment rights if a leaked draft of a Trump administration edict dubbed by critics as a censor the internet executive order that would give powerful federal agencies far-reaching powers to pick and choose which kind of internet material is and is not acceptable is allowed to go into effect. According to CNN, which obtained a copy of the draft, the new rule calls for the FCC to develop new regulations clarifying how and when the law protects social media websites when they decide to remove or suppress content on their platforms. Although still in its early stages and subject to change, the Trump administration's draft order also calls for the Federal Trade Commission to take those new policies into account when it investigates or files lawsuits against misbehaving companies. While Politico was the first to report how the draft was being circulated by the White House, CNN notes that if put into effect, the order would reflect a significant escalation by President Trump in his frequent attacks against social media companies over an alleged but unproven systemic bias against conservatives by technology platforms, and it could lead to a significant reinterpretation of a law that its authors have insisted was meant to give tech companies broad freedom to handle content as they see fit. So this is really bad. And look, everyone who is against this, who's speaking out against this, we all acknowledge that these social media and tech giants 
They absolutely have too much power. They need to be broken up. But you see, this is not the correct course of action. This is not what we should be doing. We should be using our antitrust laws. But instead, Donald Trump, what does he do? Just instinctually, he opts for censorship. That's what he wants. Now, I think Fight for the Future put it best. They said, look, we're also concerned about the growing power that mega platforms like Facebook and Twitter have to control online speech. But this draft executive order would make that situation so much worse by opening a Pandora's box of government censorship. Now, Pen America correctly pointed out that this move is forbidden by the First Amendment. I think that's pretty much obvious, which means that if he does sign this executive order, then theoretically speaking, it should be overturned. The problem, however, is that Donald Trump has stacked the judiciary. So even if this is brazenly unconstitutional, that doesn't necessarily mean that it will be overturned. I mean, I hope it's overturned because you can't have something like this that's that unconstitutional because when Democrats take power, if you're a Republican, you're going to want to make sure that you stop this type of thing and you set the correct precedent and follow the Constitution. But who knows at this point? Who knows at this point? And look, the sad news is that nobody really knows about this. Nobody's really talking about this because the media has not reported on it. So look, Everyone is pretty much in agreement that these tech giants have too much power, but so long as they are private companies, you cannot censor them. This is unconstitutional. If you want to control what they do, then you need to nationalize them. And what I would like to see ideally is that they are nationalized and you have a set of standards that are actually applied universally and universally. Or also we break them up, right? You can't have this much power because when so much of democracy is carried out online when it's basically the new public sphere you can't allow these mega corporations to control that much speech but the solution that should be proposed is not to allow the ftc and fcc and goons like ajit pai to censor what they don't like i mean this is absurd so i hope that more people will speak out about this and i hope that they're able to disaggregate the issue that you know this is a problem. You know, you shouldn't have this much power in a democracy if you're a tech giant, but simultaneously, this isn't the correct solution to that problem. A different solution needs to be applied. Now, I know Donald Trump ain't a socialist, so he's not going to talk about nationalization. But at a minimum, break them up. Use antitrust laws. You're president. You can set the agenda on this. But instead, he's an authoritarian, so instinctually, he just opts for censorship, which isn't surprising, but it's still troubling nonetheless. Mike is a total loser, so don't hit the subscribe button, okay? And whatever you do, folks, do not hit the notification bell either. Mike treats me so unfairly.